Hey guys, I hope you're all doing well this wonderful Wednesday, uh, middle of the week, beautiful day today. It's sunshiny, everything looks great so far weather-wise. Uh, I'm so thankful that you've taken time out of your schedule uh, to join me for a few minutes tonight as we uh, take some time to pray and just give you a few uh, thoughts as I read through God's Word today. Um, next week, uh, actually this week, Sunday, just a few days away, uh, is our planning to meet together again. And uh, I can't wait. Uh, just a reminder, I've said this, I'll say it again, just so that everybody knows where we're at. 10.30 Sunday morning, we will be gathering together uh, in church. And uh, we're just going to have just a Sunday morning service. No Sunday school. We're not going to have any kind of a children's church, no choir, no nothing like that. Just kind of gathering together uh, so that we can worship together, pray together, hear the word of God together. Um, just kind of, it's, it's not the best. It's not like we get to kind of do like we used to do, but man, it's, it's a step in the right direction. So I'm excited about that. Um, I've asked you uh, before just to kind of follow some of the safety guidelines. Uh, there's still recommendations if you're one of the high risk, 65 years or older, have any kind of cardiac or, or respiratory problems or illnesses or whatever, maybe consider just staying home. I'm still going to be doing some recordings of the, of those shows and kind of posting those um, later on in the day on Sunday so that if you have to stay home, um, I totally understand that, totally get that. We'll have the opportunity for you to be able to watch the, the video later on. Uh, we will have some masks there. We ask that you bring a face covering. Uh, we're going to have some there that you're trying to wear as you're traveling through the um, through the hallways, getting into the seats. The seats will be separated. Uh, I ask that you sit by your families, one family per pew as much as possible. We're going to have the pews, every other pew marked off to try to keep that social distancing uh, as well. Uh, so we're trying to do everything to keep everything safe, but again, look forward to being able to meet with you. Last Wednesday night, I began to share with you um, just some thoughts as, as we prepare to get back together and meeting, uh, some things that we ought to be doing uh, to prepare that. Uh, not only just thinking about the cleaning and the logistics of everything, but just from a spiritual aspect, what do we do? How do we prepare ourselves to get back into church? Because um, I, I don't want us to just kind of uh, just kind of go back to normal, act like everything's just like it always was, because certainly it's not. Uh, this is a new normal. This is a new experience for all of us. And I believe that God really has some exciting things that he wants to do uh, in and through his church uh, there at Memorial. So uh, from a spiritual aspect, uh, this is kind of thinking about some of the things that we can do to prepare ourselves as we get together. And so I shared with you last week some, some thoughts out of uh, Joshua, the first chapter of Joshua, as the people of Israel are now are crossing back into the Jordan. And I want to kind of just continue that that story. Um, and, and I think there's some more truths that we can kind of glean from that. So I want to read to you today from Joshua chapter 3. And, and I want to show you um, some truths that are there with Joshua and the people of Israel and truths that are very applicable to us today. So if you have your Bibles, and I hope you do, uh, follow along with me. Joshua chapter 3. Uh, verse 1. We'll read along here and I'll just kind of stop and, and just give you my thoughts as, as we go through this. So Joshua chapter 3 beginning in verse 1 says this, And then Joshua rose early in the morning and they set out from Shittim and they came to the Jordan, he and all the people of Israel, and they lodged there before they passed over. At the end of three days, the officers went through the camp. And verse 3 says, And commanded the people, As soon as you see the ark of the covenant of the Lord, your God being carried by the Le Levitical priests, then you shall set out from your place and follow it. Um, one of the things that Joshua was very passionate about was uh, making sure that that he had the Ark of the Covenant there with him. And, and you remember the whole story. Eventually he'll bring it. He'll desire to build a house for it. God won't let him do it. His son Solomon will do that. You know the whole story. But, but one of the things that Joshua recognized was the importance of having the Ark of the Lord. The Ark of the Lord, remember, represented the presence of God. And, and Joshua, upon setting into this new journey of crossing the Jordan and facing all these eliminations and facing all these uncertainties, Joshua was, was adamant that he had to make sure that the ark was there and the ark was the, the representation of God and the ark of the presence of God was going before them. And they would basically follow after the presence of God, not the other way around, right? And so that was always important in them. And as I read that, I, I thought about the situation that, that we are facing um, certainly as a church going into this new normal, right, going back, gathering again, we're going to face some uncertainties. We want to make sure that, 
uh, that God is the one who's going before us. I mean, we, we can come up with a lot of ideas and a lot of our own ways, but we want to make sure that God's the one that's going before us and we're following his direction and his leadership uh, as we move forward. But on, on a deeper level, on a, on a bigger level, really, uh, the, the situation that we're facing uh, right now currently as a nation um, with all this this uproar that's going on, I, I really haven't I haven't really posted anything on Facebook or social media because really when you begin to post things it's taken one way or the other it doesn't matter uh, which side or which viewpoint or where you're at um, it's so polarizing and social media can be such a polarizing thing but when you look at the the senseless violence that's taking place around our nation today um, and I, I I just want you to understand I I, I'm, I don't want to tell you something my, my heart my, where I'm coming at with this. I believe that the problem that we're facing as a nation is that um, basically our, our moral compass is is off. And, and what I mean by moral compass is that where, where do we find our true north? When, you know, if you have a compass and your compass is working, it's going to give you that true north uh, he heading, right? So you know exactly where north. So if I know where north is at, then of course I can tell what's south and east and west is. I can tell which direction to go, which direction I'm traveling. I can I can find my way home, so to speak, right? But if that compass is broken and it's showing me north, but north is not really north, it's really northeast or east or whatever, If I, I might think that I'm going the right direction, but really I'm getting lost more and more and more, right? I'm going further and further into the darkness, into the wilderness, into the whatever that may lead me to, right? But I'm not going the direction that I think that I'm going in. And so when I say moral compass, I, I mean just that. It's like, well, how do we define where our morals are? How do we define what's right or wrong? Uh, and I think this is the situation that we find ourselves in <clears throat> today, is that so many people define their, have their moral compass set on, on different things. In other words, uh, their true north is determined by social media. Their true north is determined by the the crowds that they hang out with. Their true north is determined by the, the which way the wind's blowing. Right? They're right or wrong. So so you have people who are so passionate about one thing or another. Right? Whatever that hot topic is, we we see where it's going right now. But but whatever that is, people are so passionate about that, and and they they have their their minds made up, and no matter what you say, it's going to come off as one way or the other. But, but when your true north is not right, they can be passionately heading in the direction that they think is right, but it not be right. And so, the question then comes: Where do we find our true north? Where do we find our moral compass? And this is where I think Joshua had the idea right: was making sure that God was there true north that god was their compass and so here's the thing that if if i have god who is unchanging as my true north regardless of what situation i face regardless of what i'm going through right i can know what's right from wrong not because somebody tells me so not because the news media or social media or or anybody else is saying this i can know what's true north i can know right from wrong i can make informed decisions based upon my moral compass which is set in the word of god the truth of god and the unchangingness that god offers to us and so one of the things that we have to make sure is that when we're moving forward right as a nation as a church as individuals we need to make sure that our true north, our headings, our bearings are right. And we need to make sure that we're focused on Christ and Christ alone. If we're focused on Christ and all of us and all of our likes, all of our dislikes, all of our colors of our skins, if we're all focused on Christ, we will all be heading in the right direction. And we may have a lot of different ideas how to get there. But at the end of the day, if our true north, if our moral compass is based solidly on God, on Christ, we will all end up in the same place. And so quite simply, I believe that's the answer, is right, is, is defining our moral compass. How do you truly find what's right or wrong? And Joshua, right at the beginning uh, of his leadership, was certain that the ark of God had to go before him. It's going to be God's way, right? And that's what we're going to choose to follow. When God says to go, we'll go. God says, turn right, we'll turn right. God says, turn left, we'll turn left. And so let me encourage you, as we set forth on this new journey, right, as we see the situation that we're in as a nation, let's make sure that our moral compass is set 
on Jesus Christ himself. Okay, let's continue reading. So um, look at verse four, it says, yet there shall be a distance between you and it, about 2,000 cubits in length. Do not come near it in order that you may know the way that you should go, for you have not passed this way before. We're talking about social distancing, right? So social distancing at its best is right here where uh, Joshua says, keep that distance, 2,000 cubits between you, right? Um, and he says, do that so that you might see which way to go. Here's the thing. I mean, when if you're right up on something, it's hard to get a big vantage, a, bit, a good vantage point of where you're going. Sometimes backing away, seeing the big picture of things, uh, it allows you to see which way to go. So what he's saying is don't don't get right up on the ark, step back and follow the direction, see where it's going, right? Get a better vantage point of where you're coming from and where it's heading so that you then can follow in that same direction. Guys, we're the same thing, right? When we look to God, we look to that moral compass is true. We gotta be right up on it, but you know, we have to kind of see the big picture as well. God has a plan, God has a purpose for everything. Let's continue reading in verse five. Consecrate yourselves for tomorrow, the Lord will do wonders among you. Listen, we talked about this a little bit last week. To consecrate means to separate, to set apart yourselves, right? To prepare yourselves for what God's going to do. He says, God will do wonders among you tomorrow, right? And I believe with my whole heart that God's desire is still today to do some wonders among us. I believe the time is right. People are right. Uh, the world certainly needs it. And we got to be prepared for it. We as a church have to prepare ourselves, set ourselves apart, because if God's going to do some wonderful things, oftentimes he wants to do it through us, through the church, right? We are his hands and his feet. We are the ones who show the love. We are the ones who set the example for where the moral compass needs to be. We set the example of what it looks like to have our moral compass set on Jesus Christ, right? So, so God's going to do some pretty amazing things. The question is, do you want to be a part of it? And so we as a church, right, when we gather back together, we're going to make sure that our moral compass is set on following the direction of God and, and being a part of what God wants to do. Sometimes to, to be a part of what God wants to do just means that we've got to get out of the way. And so God wants to do some amazing things. And so sometimes we just kind of got to get out of the way or see where he's at work and join him. Uh, one of the things that we're going to be doing as we start gathering back together is I want to lead us through the experience in God study. If you've ever done that, uh, it's a wonderful study. Uh, it's nothing new, but it's a great study. And it helps us to determine uh, where God's at work, right? So that we might join him in that work. It's one of the things that they talk about. And so I'm excited to be able to do that, but I'm more excited about what God's going to do. So we as a church, we've got to continue to prepare ourselves, right? Pray and, and look and seek and, and ask God to show us where he's at work so that we might join him in that endeavor. Let's continue reading. Look at verse 6. As Joshua says to the priest, take up the Ark of the Covenant and pass on before the people. And so they took up the Ark of the Covenant and they went before the people. Verse 7, the Lord said to Joshua, today I will begin to exalt you in the sight of all Israel so that they may know as I was with Moses, so I will be with you. See, the whole thing is God saying, I'm going to be with you. I'm going to do some great things, so follow me. All right, let's continue reading. Verse 8, and as for you, command the priests who bear the Ark of the Covenant, when you come to the brink of the waters of the Jordan, you shall stand still in the Jordan. And Joshua said to the people of Israel, Come here and listen to the words of the Lord your God. And Joshua said, Here's how you shall know that the living God is among you, and that he will, be, he will without fail drive out from before you the Canaanites, the Hittites, the Hivites, the Perizzites, the Gergesites, the Amorites, and the Jebusites. Let's take verse 9 first of all. It says, it says, come here and listen to the words of the Lord. Listen, <clears throat> uh, I have been really convicted, if you will, over the past several months about the importance of being in the Word of God. You've heard me talk about it. You've heard me encourage you. How do we define our true north? How do we know, right? How do we know which right from wrong? Well, it comes from the Word of God. Listen, this unchanging uh, Word of God gives us the morals, gives us the principles, gives us the direction. I don't have to worry about what what the news media tells me, whether it's right or fake news or whatever. I don't have to worry about somebody else's opinion or something. I can get to the Word of God and I can trust the principles that are laid out in the Word of God, in the whole Word of God, and I can find my true north. 
And the same is true with us today is that we have to be able to listen to the word of God. I hope that you are you're getting into God's word on a daily basis. I hope that you are, man, as a church, when we gather back together, it's always been important, but it's going to be ever, ever so much more important now as we seek to, to follow after God's direction. We're going to begin, we're going to be all up in, and we're going to end with the word of God. It's all about following him and listening to the word of God. And then in verse 10 it says, here's how you shall know that the living God is among you. So isn't it great? You say, how do we know that? How do we know if God's really among us? Look at what it says. He says, he, God, is going to, uh, without fail, drive out from before you the Canaanites, the Hittites, the Hivites, the Perizzites, the Gerdesites, the Amorites, and the Jebusites. And so he said, well, that's great, preacher. So that means that if, to me, to know that God's going to be among me is he's going to drive out all the, the Gergesites, the Amorites, the Hippotites. You know, look at what he's saying. You're going to know that God's among you is because when you're faced with all these adversaries, God's going to be the one that's going to go before you. Let me tell you something. One of the ways to know that you're in the center of God's will is by looking around you and recognizing there are people who are coming up against you for being in the center of God's will. Sometimes to take a stand for what's right, to take a stand for what's true north, uh, means that you're gonna face opposition. And when you're facing opposition because of your stand for what's right, you can be assured that the presence of God is there with you, right? And God, just like he drove out all these enemy nations, God's going to go before you. God's going to make a path before you. And God's going to open the doors and show you where to go. But one of the ways that you can know that, that you're in the center of God's will is when you're taking the stand for that true north. When you're heading in that true north, you're facing opposition. But rest assured, God's going to drive that opposition from before you. Uh, let's look at verse 11. Behold, the ark of the covenant of the Lord of all the earth is passing over before you in the Jordan. Now, therefore, verse 12, take 12 men from the tribes of Israel, from each from each tribe a man, and when the souls of the feet of the priests bearing the ark of the Lord, the Lord of the earth, shall rest in the waters of the Jordan, the waters of the Jordan shall be cut off from flowing, and the waters coming down from above shall stand in one heap. Now listen, I want you to look at what he says again. He says, when the, when the priest bearing the ark of the Lord, the Lord of all the hosts shall rest in the waters. Now, we all know the story here, or, or we may have heard the story. Uh, in fact, you'll see later down, it says that the people of Israel crossed on dry land. And so what's going to happen is that the Jordan River is, is overflowing at this point. We'll see that in just a minute. And so God's going to stop the water 50 miles upstream from where they're at, right? But when God stops the waters, it's going to take a minute for that water to, to kind of run through, right? So if God's stopping at 15 miles... All that water has to continue to flow. So here's the thing is that they didn't just sit and wait for the waters to flow and to go and for the land to dry before they crossed. No, the priests who were carrying the Ark of the Covenant, they began to wade into the water, right? I don't know how far God got up to their ankles, to their shins, to their knees, to their hips, to their waist. I don't know. How far did it get before the, the water actually went all the way? But I want you to see this, is that stepping out in faith is not always about stepping out on dry ground. Sometimes God calls us to step out in faith and to do things that, that seem to be a bit dangerous, to seem to be a bit odd. Like, God, can't we just wait until the waters are dry? Like, God, can't we just wait till the ground's dry? Can't we just wait till everything is perfect? Can't we just wait until all things look safe? But no, God says, no, when you get to the Jordan, begin to walk into the, into the Jordan. And when the priests step into the water, and then I'm going to stop, right? The step of faith was what was necessary for God to see that they were going to believe. And then God stopped. But God could have just parted the sea, parted the, the, the river, just like he did the Red Sea. God could have built a bridge for him, right? God could have made him float over the Jordan. No, but here's the thing. It's our faith. It's putting feet to our faith, right, that we begin to see the power of God in our lives. That's exactly what's taking place. So sometimes when we're, when we're looking to follow that true north, when we've when we got our moral compass right and God's calling us to, to stand and to do things, sometimes that way may not always seem to be the most popular way. Sometimes it may not always seem to be the best way. 
But listen, if we're following after God, if he's our true north, and God's leading, God's guiding, God's directing, it doesn't matter how high the water gets, step out into the water, right? Step out into faith, step out into faith, and you'll be a part of the power of God. Let's continue to witness uh, this this crazy thing that God's going to do here, right? So in verse 13, it says that um, they, they shall rest in the waters of the Jordan. The waters of the Jordan shall be cut off from flowing. The waters coming down from above shall be stand in one heap. And look at verse 14. It says, So when the people set out from their tents to pass over the Jordan with the priests bearing the Ark of the Covenant before the people, and as soon as those bearing the Ark had come as far as the Jordan, and look what it says, And the feet of the priests bearing the Ark were dipped in the brink of the water. Now the Jordan overflows all its banks through the time of the harvest. The waters coming down from above, 50 miles up, remember, uh, stood and rose up in a heap very far away at Adam in the city beside Zarethan. And those flowing down towards the Sea of the Arab and the Salt Sea were completely cut off, and the people passed over opposite Jordan. Now the priests bearing the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord stood firmly on dry ground in the midst of the Jordan, and all of Israel was passing over on dry ground until all the nation finished passing over the Jordan. And so they crossed over on dry ground, right? But I want you to see the priests stepped out into the water before the ground was dry. So here they are. They're on the, the brinks of the Jordan River. They had to set out. They had to pack up all their tents. They had to leave uh, the safety of the of the known to, to cross over into the unknown. And sometimes it's so difficult to do that. And we don't know what tomorrow holds. I've said this before, and you've heard it, but we know who holds tomorrow. We don't know what it's going to be like on a Sunday when we gather together. We don't know what it's going to be like tomorrow. We don't know. And that's so difficult for us to be able to, to face life. But man, here's the thing. I, if, if my moral compass is pointed towards the right way, if if the, the presence of God is what I'm seeking, the Word of God is what I'm listening to, if I'm looking at the principles in the Word of God to guide me, to direct me, to lead me, man, then it doesn't matter what tomorrow holds, right? It doesn't matter. Sure, there may be fear, there may be doubt, but at the end of the day, one thing that washes away all that is my faith, my belief in Jesus Christ. And so, man, listen, in these days to come, you, 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 you may be called to step out into the water. You may be called to, to stretch your faith. You may be called to do things that seem to be a bit odd or a bit different or outside of your comfort zone. You may be called in the days to come to do things that you don't think you can do. Well, listen, that's exactly where God wants you to be at. If you're sure that your true north, your moral compass is set on the word of God, the presence of God, step out into the water, step out into faith, trust God, and God will do some amazing things among you. I don't know about you, but that's what I'm looking forward to for the church that God's building. Jesus said, I'm building my church. The church gonna build the, that he's building is going to bust down the gates of hell, right? And that's kind of where God, I think, wants us to be at. Here we are, Memorial Baptist Church in Clarksville, Tennessee, Round Pond, Tennessee. Uh, what's God's future for us? Well, I don't know, but man, it's going to be wrapped up in following after him, following after his will, following in his word, getting all up into what he wants us to do, what he wants us to be. Man, I want us to be the church that God is building, and I want us to see God do some amazing things in us and among us. I'm looking forward to that. Looking forward to seeing you guys. Uh, so take these things to heart. Uh, man, when we get back to church and we start talking about where we're going, where we're heading, uh, man, it's like a blank slate. We'll be able to look at, at the Word. We'll be able to seek God's direction. Uh, looking forward to being able to lead us uh, down that path together. So I want to have a few minutes of prayer and certainly continue to pray for the uh, the things that are taking place in our nation. Uh, I, I don't take it lightly. I'm not saying, oh, this is just one easy fix. I'm just saying I think that's the problem. Um, but I, I think that the, the fix is found in the same situation that we see. The fix is found in Christ. And so we, the church, we have the answers. We have the direction. We don't need to be silent in that. We need to pray for our leaders. Pray for those who are involved in these things. Pray for um, our neighbors. Love one another, right? Um, just just think about what the churches represent. That's who we need to be. So let's, let's take a few minutes and we'll pray together. I encourage you to go to our Facebook uh, or to our, our website, rather. Uh, the prayer wall is still there. It's still active. There's some prayer requests on there. You can go and pray and you can uh, click on there. Let them know that you're praying for them. You can put your own prayer requests there as well. 
Uh, you can keep it anonymous. If you don't want to put your name there, you can do that as well. Uh, but we want to pray for you. We want to be there for you. So let's take some time and we'll pray together. Father God, we thank you so much again for uh, just always being true, Lord, always being there. Lord, I, I thank you, Lord, in the so many things that we go through in this world that are uncertain, that you are not one of them, Lord. And, and many times when we seek and we and we struggle and we try to find you, Lord, it's it's not you that's moved, it's not you that's changed, but it's us who are seeking uh, the answers in so many different directions. So, Father, I pray that, God, that you would help us to get our moral compass where it needs to be, Lord, that we would set you as the, that true north, that you would set you as the, the true foundation of all that we do, Lord, that we would, we would be serious about getting into your word, and God, through your word, through your Holy Spirit, that you would reveal the truths that we need to know, Lord, that you would show us, God, who you are, that you show us who we need to be, Lord, as your church, as your body. God, I pray for our nation, Lord. I pray especially for so many people who are who are just hurting over the situations that we're facing, Lord. There's, there's some real suffering that's going on, Lord. I, I just, I don't deny that. I just, I know that people are very passionate about uh, these different things, regardless of where you're at or where they find themselves. And there's some people who are really hurt and confused and so, Father, I just lift them up to you, Lord. I pray for our, 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 our nation as a whole, Lord, that you would help us to turn our focus to you, Lord, to see where the, the true answer is found in Christ. And, Lord, I just pray that you would help, help me, help our church, help each individual who's watching this video right now, Lord. Make sure that we are following after you and, and we're following your direction, that we might be able to be your hands and your feet, that we might be able to speak your love into the lives of somebody else who needs it, Lord. Father, as we gather back together as a church, Lord, I pray that you'd be an opportunity for us to, to refocus, to regather our our, our, our our purpose and to re-understand what our vision is and to just re regain, Lord, the, the, the reason why you called us to be a church. Father, I look forward to what you're going to do. I pray that we might be separated, uh, Lord, in such a way that we show the world your love, that we show the world your compassion, your peace, and your mercy, and your grace, and that we might be examples uh, of that everywhere that we go. Father, I pray for each member of our church, for each family of our church, Lord. I pray for our community and around our church and around us, Lord. I pray, God, for our nation. I pray for our world. I pray for other churches who are going back in this direction, who will be meeting again for the first time in such a long time. God, I pray that uh, you just would have your way, and Lord, that you would continue to lead us and guide us and direct us. I pray for our leadership, Lord, both locally, statewide, uh, nationwide, just worldwide, Lord, that you would con continue to just make yourself known in a way and lead us and direct us, Lord. God, I look forward to getting to know you more. I look forward to what you're going to do in my life. I look forward to, to God, you using me in a way that, that makes a difference in the lives of those around me. God, we love you. God, we just we just pray, God, that you would just make yourself known through the midst of all of the craziness that we face in this world. God, we want to make sure that what we do brings honor and glory to you and to you alone. Father, we look forward to seeing, again, what you're going to do. We love you. We thank you. We praise you. We honor you. For it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thanks, guys. You have a great day, and I'll see you soon.